Well, that escalated quickly. Yo, Fabio Wardley crumples Nathan Gorman in three rounds in a wild fight. I anticipated that this would be an entertaining scrap because it normally is when you get two young heavyweights fighting each other like this. It doesn't matter what level it's at. If you get two young heavyweights to fight each other, there's a very good chance it's going to turn into a good scrap. And that was certainly the case for as long as this fight lasted. Now, in the first round, Nathan Gorman, I think, couldn't believe his luck because he was landing his jab. He landed a nice uppercut. He was making Fabio Wardley miss. You could see that Gorman was the more well-schooled of the two. You could see that Gorman had the experience just based on the first round alone. And going into the first half of the second round, Gorman was, again, piecing Fabio up, landing nice jabs and shots. And then he hit Fabio with something on the nose, which cut him across the nose bridge. And I think at that stage, Gorman felt like it's only a matter of time before he takes Fabio Wardley out because he was landing clean so often. But this cruel sport is ironic because it turns out that the worst thing he could have done was actually hurt Fabio Wardley and cut his nose because Wardley went into a Spartan rage. <laughs> Bro, he went, what's that anime character called? Super Saiyan, whatever it is. Yeah, that's what Fabio Wardley did, bro. He went all out Spartan rage and he just tore into Nathan Gorman. All the boxing completely out the window, just tore into him, forced him back to the ropes, hit him with a barrage of right hands and dropped him. That's the way a fighter is supposed to react when they get buzzed, when they get hurt like that, when they're getting pieced up. That's how they're supposed to react with defiance, not this look of feeling sorry for yourself and, oh, I don't know what to do and asking everybody questions. No, you're supposed to react with defiance. And that's what Fabio Wardley did. As inexperienced as he is, no amateur fights, just a few white collar bouts. And he got in there with a much more experienced guy, Nathan Gorman, who hit him, who hurt him. And Fabio was like, nah, this ain't happening today. <laughs> Yo, don't let that slightly middle class Ipswich accent fool you. Fabio Wardley, as the Americans say, has got some dog in him. Yeah, he's got heart. He's got toughness there. He took it to Nathan Gorman and he punched the fight right out of him. Gorman was dropped twice in the second round. And I think Gorman was in a state of shock. He must have been thinking, I thought I had this fight in the bag after that first round and a half. Now I'm on the canvas. Nathan Gorman went down, he got back up, but he was down again before the end of the second. Then in the third round, it just looked like a matter of time. Gorman's confidence was all gone, hoping to survive and just box for a little bit. But no, Fabio Wardley was coming to finish it. He was still vexed from the round before, bro. <laughs> he dropped him again and Gorman's team threw in the towel. I guess they could see by Nathan Gorman's body language that he wasn't at the races at all. After Wardley turned, it, turned the tables on him in that second round, it just totally crushed Nathan Gorman's spirit. That's all she wrote. So third round TKO victory for Fabio Wardley in a highly entertaining three-round heavyweight fight for the British title. As I said earlier on, I expected this to be an entertaining fight, given the fact it's two young heavyweights who believe that they're better than the other guy. But I didn't expect the drama to unfold this quick. I thought that maybe the drama would unfold later on in the fight. I thought maybe Gorman would get off to a lead, you know, outboxing Wardley. But towards the middle rounds, Wardley, sensing that he's down, would start to force the action. And then maybe if Wardley gets a stoppage, it's going to be late, you know, maybe rounds nine to 12. But no, the fight was all condensed down into less than three rounds. Whatever you think about Fabio Wardley, and I've already seen people say, oh, he's not going to go anywhere. He's too crude and he doesn't have the skills and he needs a lot of work. And yeah, he's got heart and he can punch, obviously, but he's going to get exposed. Look, I don't expect every heavyweight that I watch or every fighter that I watch to go on to become multi-time world champions and all-time greats and pound-for-pound -pound kings. No, I just take it for what it is. And with Fabio Wardley, he's a very entertaining heavyweight from what we've seen so far. And of course, 
he has gained a lot of experience in the gym, sparring Dylan White and probably Babich and all the other heavyweights. And I think a couple of cruiserweights that Dylan White has managed over the years. And it is like Spartan Greece in the Dylan White heavyweight gym because White spars hard. I saw that sparring footage of him and Alan Babich going at it, Dylan White and Babich. And that was like an all out slug. It's like a street fight. <laughs> That's how Dilla White does things in the gym. And so there's, he's not going to sign you unless you're able to actually handle that type of environment. And that's why I thought Fabio Wardley must be a really strong minded guy because Dylan White would not be, you know, having someone in to spar him all the time unless the guy's tough. And evidently, Fabio Wardley is tough. He's got that, as I said in the pre fight video, he's got that innate confidence. All the experience that Nathan Gorman had, he didn't have the same spirit as Fabio Wardley. He had better skills, but his spirit was nowhere near as fierce. Is it going to be enough to take him to world titles and all that kind of stuff? Obviously, he needs a lot of work, a lot of work. But with that kind of spirit, as long as you're not getting <laughs> into those kind of slugfests too often, you can go a long way. And as far as Nathan Gorman, he seemed as sure of a win in this fight as he was going into, into the Dubois fight. In fact, he seemed more sure of a win going into this fight because in his head, he's thinking, I've been boxing since I was little. I've got an extensive amateur background. I've got more pro fights than this guy. I come from a fighting family. This guy has done a few white collar fights, you know? So I'm sure in Nathan Gorman's head, he was thinking, there's no way this guy can beat me. But he has found out the hard way <laughs> twice that he's not as good as he thought he was. And he nearly retired after the Daniel Dubois fight. So now that he's lost to a white collar guy, is he actually going to retire this time? It wouldn't surprise me, you know? If he does come back, he's going to need to come back with more ferocity in his heart. And look, he kept getting up, obviously, just like in the Daniel Dubois fight, but there was no fire in his eyes. You know, some guys get off the canvas and there is a rage inside them. They are incensed that the opponent had the audacity to drop them. And that's what you need in boxing, people. You need to have that kind of defiance in you. Nathan Gorman doesn't appear to have that. He's going to need to find it from somewhere. He's going to need to channel the spirit of, is it his uncle, Bartley Gorman? Was it his granddad or his uncle? I'm not sure, but he's going to need to channel the spirit of Bartley Gorman if he's going to continue in boxing and do anything at all, even win a British title. He's going to need to channel that kind of spirit. As far as Fabio Wardley, what he does next, I mean, I think he should defend the British title a few times. Me personally, because he does need a lot of work. And the heavyweight division is very congested. There's a lot of talent in there. There's a lot of very dangerous fighters for a guy like Fabio Wardley. And look, he's 27, which is not ancient at all in the heavyweight division. So yeah, I'd say stick around at domestic level, defend the British title, then maybe go for a European, go the traditional route. Since he's lacking in experience, go that traditional old route. Don't try to jump straight to world level. That's just my personal view on it. Give me your views in the comments. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, is decentralized, and is 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract. There's no commitment. You can cancel at any time and it's cheaper 
than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.